From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Both the county and the city commissions have spoken. Starting today, the Gallatin City County Health Department has a new health officer. I'm Cody Boyer with the next steps of the process. When the lots are full and the roads are jammed, maybe driving isn't the best way to get around in Yellowstone National Park. I'm John Sheeran. Coming up, see a new idea in getting around the park. What a view there we have this what day is it, Jen? Wednesday. It's Wednesday, Wednesday yeah. morning. Hope day. <laughs> Hope day. How can you forget that, Holly? You know, uh, Are I'm they all just, running together again? It, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I, I'm done. You guys, Matt, how's the weather? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's uh, two days a week. It's Monday, 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 Friday. That's, that's how it. we do right. things here on yeah. Montana this morning. Uh, <laughs> well, on this uh, Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Monday, whatever it is, go, temperatures yeah. holding into the 30s and 40s, 32 in West Yellowstone, 39 in Butte. There's a very isolated chance of a shower or a thunderstorm west of the divide. Most of our activity is going to be off to our north, now, not necessarily in our viewing area, but there is an outside chance we could see a stray thunder shower rumble its way back through the area. Daytime highs into the 80s, a little breezy. Look for a southwest wind, 10 to 20 miles an hour with sustained winds, near 30 with the wind gust, but it is going to be a fabulous day with temperatures into the 70s and 80s. We'll talk more about a big cool down heading our direction in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Matt. 632 now on this Wednesday. Wednesday. Our top story this half hour. Her title has gone from expected to official. The new Gallatin City County Health Officer has been approved by both the Gallatin County and Bozeman City Commission. MTN's Cody Boyer spoke with Lori Christensen halfway through the process and has our story. It was in this room more than a year ago, March 2020, when now former Gallatin City County Health Officer Matt Kelly first told everybody that Gallatin County not only had COVID-19, but we were the first in the state to have a case confirmed. And now, starting with the county commission approval, the county has a new health officer. Any further discussion? We have a motion for approval of Lori Christensen as the health officer. You know, I would be not truthful if I didn't say that I am a little bit nervous. This time, Kelly wasn't present, and Lori Christensen was stepping into his shoes. Congratulations, Ms. Christensen, the new Board of Health or health officer. You take opportunities as they arise and as you can see that you can serve a community in a different way. Talking with me moments after county commissioners approved her appointment, Christensen says there's a lot to work on, but even more to work with. The example that the county commission gave today in terms of finding opportunities to partner uh, as we work through the interlocal agreement, I think that's an excellent way to really establish a relationship. But public comment was not absent. Perhaps it would be in the public's interest if you would wait a week. One man spoke of a time past, an instance when he says he had some difficulties working with the departments of environmental quality and health. I know you've interviewed the candidates for this job, but I don't know that you interviewed any of the people that use the system. But one other, Sean O'Callaghan, Gallatin County Planning Director, spoke about years of working with Christensen. I found her to be a great partner. I found her to be a good leader. I uh, found her to operate with integrity. As for Christensen herself, she says the challenges are not unknown to her, from what the pandemic has taught us to ever ballooning growth. House Bill 257 as well as House Bill 121. Um, and also, too, I mean, we still have uh, we still have COVID-19 cases. So we are still in a pandemic and we're still kind of gliding out of that. And change, she says, is not just an expectation. It's part of her plan. Knowing that there's a lot more needs out there that we haven't fully addressed or fully understand. We're in a position where we can make great change, and I'm looking forward to it. In Gallatin County, Cody Boyer, MTN News. Christensen tells us if anyone has any concerns or questions for her, they can now contact her directly at the Gallatin City County Health Department. Well, right now it's legal to possess marijuana in Montana, but you still can't buy it. Yeah, but that will change in less than six months as Montanans will be able to purchase recreational marijuana as sales begin when the calendar turns 2022. As MTN's Jonathan Ambarian reports, both marijuana providers and state regulators are rushing to get ready. 
We're now less than six months away from the first legal recreational marijuana sales in Montana, set to begin on January 1st, 2022. That date was established by House Bill 701, the Montana legislature's plan for implementing marijuana legalization. And it's a starting date that dispensaries and administrators both believe they can meet, but it's still going to take some work. The initial date kind of ramped us up a little bit, and now that we have a little bit more time to prepare, um, we feel pretty comfortable with moving forward. It is still aggressive, but we do feel that for the most part, we will have the rules and the computer systems, all of those programs in place to meet that timeline. When voters approved Initiative 190 last November, the start of recreational marijuana licensing would have been October 1st. HB 701 pushed that back to January 1st. Medical providers that were already operating will be able to immediately begin adult use sales after that date, if they're in a county where voters approved 190. The biggest change for dispensaries will be opening up to a much larger market. Collective Elevation Helena currently has just five employees. Managers say they've looked at hiring more staff to prepare for adult use sales, but they're facing the same labor challenges as many other businesses. With the corona and everything, it's getting hard to find, you know, wanting help. The Montana Department of Revenue will be overseeing recreational marijuana sales and taking over the medical program from DPHHS. Starting in September, they'll be seeking public input as they start working on rules. The department is excited to get this program up and started and we look forward to working with the public and want them to know that it is meant to be a collaborative process. In the meantime, dispensaries will be doing what they can to be prepared to start selling as soon as the state is ready. We want to move forward just as bad as people want to come in, you know. For the first 18 months, only existing medical marijuana providers will be allowed to enter the recreational market in Montana. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. If you'd like to see more information on how the state is preparing for marijuana legalization, you can go to our website. 638 now, a driverless electric shuttle began ferrying passengers this morning in Yellowstone National Park. MTN's John Shear explains how it works and why it's there. Say you're visiting Yellowstone and you're staying here in one of the canyon lodges or here in the nearby campground and you'd like to eat here at Canyon Lodge or maybe visit the grill over here or the sporting goods store. Do you want to make the one and a half mile drive on your own or would you be interested in a free ride? And we're so honored to be able to provide this new innovative way of transportation and technology to National Park Service. The purpose of this deployment is to test the technology in a national park. And we look at that as a way that we can reduce congestion in the future. We think that it's uh, something that we need to be out in front of. Superintendent Cam Sholey says the four most congested areas in the park are Old Faithful, the Midway Geyser Basin, Norris Geyser Basin, and the Canyon area. And that congestion is only growing. I believe it's very possible we'll hit four, 4.7 to 5 million visitors this year in this park. A couple of small six passenger shuttles won't do much to cure the crowding woes 5 million park visits will pose, but it might help in the future. Um, our goal is to learn as much as we can and um, apply this lesson. The shuttles will travel a short route from the Canyon Visitor Services area to the lodges and from the campground back to services. But the burning questions are, is it safe and would you ride it? Absolutely. These are super impressive. We wish the park a lot of luck in them. We know that we have done everything possible to ensure a safe service and transportation. This 12-week pilot project will cost about $360,000 and is paid for by the Department of Transportation. Researchers hope it points the way to the future. I hope to learn uh, how visitors respond to these shuttles. Uh, I think that response would be very positive, at least I hope, particularly for those with mobility impairments and for children who seem to find this uh, charismatic vehicle very entertaining. Superintendent Scholey says that holds promise for a future with many shuttle rides and far fewer traffic jams. In Canyon, in Yellowstone National Park, I'm John Shearer, MTN News. Can't wait to try those. Well, the shuttles can operate for about four hours on a charge. They can get a fast recharge right in the Canyon parking lot and a full charge overnight in the garage where they are kept. You can take a visual ride on the shuttle with our John Shear anytime at our website. Very cool.
640 now in other headlines. Gallatin County Parks Department holding its first ever trout fishing derby. The event is this Saturday, Gallatin Regional Park from 8 o'clock in the morning till noon. Kids under 12 are invited to take part. There will be snacks, raffles and prizes. The event is in honor of Father's Day and the Parks Department says the event could not happen without the support of donations from local businesses. Just to get out with the kids and have a good time and you know we're going to have staff here to support and help out and measure fish and um, hopefully everybody just has a real fun time out here and the park will be this will be stocked with some nice fish FWPs cooperating to get us some good sized fish so I like to see a lot of kids smiling catching some nice fish. Good stuff. There will be first, second and third place prizes for the largest fish caught at the Derby. Anglers must supply their own equipment. Don't forget to bring your own fishing rod and bait. So great time that, to be outside at the park, at the lake. That. Yeah, so so much to do. Yeah, like it. Fun stuff. Well, it could be that uh, coming up here, it could be that the child tax credit for families will arrive much sooner than expected when checks might be hitting bank accounts. That's coming up. But first, let's check in with our friends at CBS This Morning for a look at what's coming up at 7 o'clock. Good morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, a bombshell report shows just how little the wealthiest Americans have been paying in taxes, how these billionaires kept their tax bills so low, and why it's all perfectly legal. Also, the cicada invasion is in full swing in some parts of the country. Find out how long the insects are sticking around and who's putting them on their menu? And we spring into summer with Lin-Manuel Miranda, the Tony and Grammy winner, talks with us about bringing In the Heights to the big screen. We'll see you at 7.